Welcome back, everybody, to the Brody File. All right, well, Congressman Paul Ryan lit the liberal blogosphere on fire when he told the Brody File that his Catholic faith helped shape his budget plan. Paraphrasing here, but they basically said, are you kidding me? One of the top religion writers in the country, Sarah Posner, wrote this, quote, no one's religious view is entitled to preference when Congress is crafting the federal budget. She went on to say progressives and conservatives should duke it out but without invoking religion, the budget should be based on shared concepts of fairness and justice, not whether Jesus or God or Allah, oh, never mind, the Republicans can never go for that, approves. And joining us now, look, Sarah Posner in the studio. Sarah, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, David. Wonderful. Tell me a little bit about the, the beef with Paul Ryan and, and, and this idea of invoking his Catholic faith with the budget? Well, I think the beef was really came from Catholic liberals and progressives, uh, but the religious beef came from religious progressives, Catholic progressives, who said that his invocation of his Catholic faith to support his budget was actually contrary to what Catholic teaching is on social justice. Mm -hmm. And so they really took issue with the idea that he said that the, that the budget really reflects the preferential option for the poor, or that the budget, his budget proposal reflects the Catholic concept of subsidiarity. They argue that the Catholic concept of subsidiarity, subsidiarity does not support the idea of small government, like, like Ryan argues. Well, and it's ruffled a lot of feathers. And, you know, and I'm wondering, that, you know, the counter argument to, to some of that is that, and what Paul Ryan will say is that, look, if we really care about the needy and the poor and all of these folks, then shouldn't we let them know that the train is coming? And shouldn't we kind of wean them off some of this if we have to, rather than getting slammed in 10 years when all of a sudden we're going to have a major crisis on our hand? What's the, what have you heard from, from liberals in, uh, from that perspective? Well, I think the counter argument there, of course, is that the Ryan budget and, and tax cuts for the wealthy and basically benefits for corporations as opposed to needy people is not going to cause that trickling down of benefits benefits for, for people who are in need and that there's really a need for a social safety net that churches are there and other NGOs are there to help the poor, mm -hmm. uh, but that it's really necessary for the government to still have in place a social safety net for those people because without it, they will fall into poverty. Interesting. Uh, you know, tell me a little bit, because you do take the liberals to task a little bit in here saying that they shouldn't cloak their budget in religion either, because this is done on both sides, maybe more so from the conservative side. Right. But the, but the liberals do it too, as, as well. Yes, and you know, this week we saw uh, a letter from Rosa DeLauro, who is a Democrat from Connecticut and a Catholic, and she wrote to the bishops basically saying that they should speak out about the budget on, on moral terms. They had spoken out about other issues relating to contraception and so forth, and she wanted to push them to speak on social justice issues at the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. But just like Ryan shouldn't go to the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops to look for a stamp of approval for his budget proposal, the Democrats shouldn't either. And I understand the impulse that Congresswoman DeLauro had, which was, look, you know, what Ryan is saying isn't really reflecting Catholic social justice teaching. But at the same time, I think that members of Congress should not be saying, well, I, we're the ones who have this religious stamp of approval on our version of the budget. Sarah Posner, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Thank you.